Red flags of a distribution deal. Red flags of a distribution deal. Save one of the toughest for last. Um, Sorry. Actually, you know, actually maybe not because when I'm, so a lot of the pictures I do are home entertainment titles, not necessarily pictures that'll go to um, theatrical. If they do, they'll go limited theatrical. Um, and I think a lot of times when I look at a contract, yeah, I'm looking at the marketing and how much they're saying the marketing is gonna cost. Um, a, a lot of the distributors that I try to avoid are these are these guys that put in their contracts that, well, they're gonna spend 50 or $75,000 or $100,000 on P&A and marketing. And I'm like, well, what exactly are you gonna spend that money on? Because to get the guy, the average guy, just walking down the street to see your movie, like you need $5 million minimum. I mean, you need huge amounts of P&A just to get that random guy walking down the street to even know what your movie is. I mean, the, the amount of money it takes to market uh, billboards and bus shelters and bus sides and TV spots and online and getting that banner on IMDb on the front page. I mean, it costs millions and millions of dollars to do a campaign wide enough to really draw those kind of eyeballs. Home entertainment is such a different beast. It's a lot of it's done through now social media, through free publicity, getting interviews and junkets with your actors or getting reviews written up and that sort of thing. Um, or, you know, through other creative, non-expensive forms of marketing, like for example, you know, when you go into Xbox or Netflix and it says, you might also like, and it lists, getting high up on that algorithm where your film is listed with some big film, you might also like this little film. That means so much more to a smaller, um, to a smaller film or just getting, you know, um, an end cap in Walmart is a huge, it may not cost you a lot to do that, but if you have a distributor that has a relationship that can do that, that's what happened with Ninja Apocalypse. We got an end cap in Walmart and in Best Buy and that didn't cost anything extra, That was, but that was sort of smart, you know, a distributor using relationships and things. That's how you have to get your film known, premiering at a really, a festival that's got, you know, really good um, promotional um, sponsorship and, and press behind it. Um, we premiered Ninja Apocalypse at Comic-Con in San Diego. Mm. Perfect. Right. And so instead of spending millions and millions of dollars, you have, it's more things like that that I look for. So when I see a distribution contract that says, oh, I'm going to spend $75,000 in marketing, I'm like, on what? What are you spending that on? Well, we got to cut trailers. Like, I can cut a trailer. I can get a cut trailer cut for grand. What else? Uh, well, you know, we got to do posters. I'm like, same thing. I mean, I have designers that can do posters. I would rather do those things. And instead of having the distributor bill some enormous markup, um, and a lot of times, if they have that $75,000 marketing expense built in, you're not gonna see any money until that 75,000 is recouped. It's not like they're gonna say, well, we've only spent 10 of it, so okay, we'll start cutting you checks now. No, they're gonna keep saying, oh, well, you know, we haven't hit that $75,000 marketing cap. So I really look at you know, that number, how much they're spending, um, and it should be a smaller number, and I wanna know honestly what it is. I want it to be something where we actually have a chance at making some getting a recoupment here and not, you have to, you know, you have to make 75 or hundred grand before we even see the first dollar because on a million dollar picture, I mean, it's not, you're not going to be out there in theaters, you know, making $30 million. So, um, the economics are different and, um, how that money is spent is different. So things like, um, going to film markets, that's a reasonable, justifiable distribution expense. Um, and then marketing expenses, you know, you know, there's, there's certain, um, you know, cut, cutting trailers can be reasonable as long as I know, you know, okay, what they're spending. I like to usually have um, the ability to approve any expense over a certain amount so I know that they're not being unreasonable. Um, you know, and then there could be, you know, working meals, lunches with buyers, things like that are reasonable, but up to a certain amount. So, so I'm usually looking for that number to be, um, you know, cur curtailed somewhat. And then in terms of the term of the, the distribution contract, a lot of times, you know, seven years is, is pretty standard, um, but there, you know, very, you know, I would almost never do anything in perpetuity, you know, and then sometimes you see contracts that are 10 years or 12 years that might be, that seemed a little excessive. In terms of fees, um, you know, like for me, I'm kind of looking around the 20% range in terms of what I'm willing to pay a distributor. Um, some charge as much as 30% or more. So, you know, um, you know, red flags to me are typically, you know, term fees, marketing expenses are, are the first thing. And then, you know, other than that, you're just looking at, you know, sort of any onerous language that ties you to something you don't want to be tied to. Like, oh, we want rights to future, all the future sequels or something. And, you know, like, unless you're willing to invest money in those future sequels, I mean, we're only talking about this picture, you know, right here. So, 
Um, so yeah, and, and then I, you know, I think you can tell reputable distributors too just by the language of their contracts. Um, a lot of times, too, if you little things like if you start to see a lot of like typos and spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes, and this is a distributor you're not familiar with, to me that's a red flag because any legi legitimate distributor is going to have a legitimate attorney drafting those contracts, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to see them riddled with mistakes. I typically don't deal with distributors that I've never heard of. Um, usually they come to me by way of someone who I know who's worked with them or I, you know, they've been around for a while. Um, I know their work and, and I try, so I try to stick with, with distributors that I already know have a good reputation. I already know people have worked with them. I've said good things about them. So I don't have to worry about a lot of those, um, uh, a lot of those issues.